So, MTGX, this is my name. Don't mind learning how to pronounce it, Yashar. Uh, when I was living in the US, I called myself Usher. So you can call me that when you talk to me afterwards. That's fine. So a little bit about myself. Uh, you mentioned a little bit. Uh, I started working in the broadcasting and TV industry, a company called VizRT, who builds uh, very complex, huge systems uh, for the biggest broadcasters out there. Uh, we have CNN, BBC, ABC, and Fox as customers. Uh, and after a while, I loved gaming. I've always done that. I had a bunch of friends working at EA Games. So I decided to join the gaming industry. And I built a bunch of games uh, as a development director on EA. And anyone played Battlefield games here or know about them? Nice. Basically, it's one of the biggest game franchises in the world. And every time they release a game, it's a top five or top 10 grossing all categories. So it's a huge franchise. I had a dilemma. I'm a pacifist, and these are war games. So I thought I should do something that makes people happy. So what I did, I had a bunch of friends at Spotify. So I joined the music industry, and one of the biggest drivers in the music industry. So I was there for almost two years doing product. I was a product manager for uh, the mobile team, and then also the platform team. So I worked there and released approximately 150 products uh, integrations before I decided to leave to MTG. And Modern Times Group, as mentioned, is uh, one of the biggest European broadcasters. And I joined as a CTO for, for online. And the cool thing is we're doing both TV, film, music, gaming, and sports. So I have to use everything I did before in this company, which is really, really fun. So a little bit about Modern Times Group. It is the, the broadcasting company in Europe that has the largest footprint. And uh, here is TV3 and Viaset. And it's, biggest, it's big in Nordics, Baltics, and Eastern Europe and Russia. So we have operations in 37 countries uh, when it comes to broadcasting. And radio, we are really big in Nordics and Baltics as well. Uh, I heard Power Hit Radio on the taxi over here. So that's one of our brands. Uh, but we also produce content. We're not just broadcast them, we produce content. So Nice Entertainment Group is a very large production company that we own. And they operate in 16 countries and distribute to 240 territories, so very big. So MTGX, where I work, is part of MTG. We drive all the online and digital part of MTG, basically. There's four parts. Uh, I run the labs part, which is uh, all technology. So I, I build all the products. And then you have play, which is online video. And broadcasting is going more and more online and more and more going digital. So we have a great focus on, on online video. Then there's a ventures team that buy other companies that fit our portfolio, but also working with you know, the new startups. I saw some hands over there, so please meet me afterwards, uh, that have the, you know, the, the f future Facebooks or the future uh, WhatsApps and, and so on. And then we have creations who do um, basically new formats, new content that are a little bit more in the future. So why I'm here today, I joined MTG almost nine months ago. The company MTGX was founded a little bit after, so it's only been live eight months. And we said we have to deliver products within four or five months. We had eight products to deliver within sports, music, gaming, esports, and so on. I will talk more about them later. And we had to deliver them from September to the end of the year or beginning of this year, so four to five months. And that's a challenge, right? You had eight completely different products, and you have to deliver them on time. So that's super important. So we had to think startup. So we, we set a bunch of policies in order to be able to work as startups and deliver as startups. And that's what I want to share with you guys. So we'll, the policies are four. Great team, verify idea, execute fast, and quality matters. Klaus mentioned a bunch of these things, so it's good that I can tie into that. So let's go into the details. So everybody knows A-Team, I hope. This is like the best team ever on TV. These four very crazy guys always you know, did really amazing stuff. So this is how a startup should be. They should be you know, very small and smart. They should have a right mix of, of skills. They should be able to hustle, especially Mr. T, and have endurance. So let's go into what these different topics within this discipline, within this thing, uh, policy means. 
So first of all, the small and smart team. I want to take Supercell as an example. They're really good at this. So what they, their motto is actually, best way to get big is by being small, and they live by it. Actually, Clash of Clans, that is the top grossing game right now on App Store, I think they're grossing approximately $1 million daily just in US, just on App Store. This game is, they built it with six to 10 people only. So that is accomplishment, really. So the reason for, if you're small, and the reason for being successful is smart, you have to be smart as well. And smart is, they have to, be, have, to have really talented people. It's hard to have that, but you know, try to have it. Uh, but one important thing is, is you have to know your industry. For example, in our music team, the people working in the music team, they know music really well. They understand all the licensing structures, they understand all the different formats, and so on. Within the video team, these guys know everything about the video formats, the streaming protocols, the CDNs, and so on. They are experts in their areas. Otherwise, they would just make stupid mistakes, and we don't want that. We want to be fast. We have to have experts. So sm small and smart is important. The right mix. Obviously, I mean, you have to have a skill set within the team that that's makes it ab enables you to deliver. If you're building a car, you need something. If you're building a digital product, you need something else. Uh, within digital, I would say, if you generalize things, uh, we need a producer that's really good, knows what they're doing, uh, good developers. Primarily, they're both front-end and back-end. So try to have a, you know, somebody with a larger skill set. Designers, I think they should both know UX and know UI. So they both understand the user flows, but also be pixel pushers to do the nice graphics. And today, you really need growth factors. You need to have people understand how to grow a product, either if it's web or mobile. So that's super important to have. Oh, by the way, it's, this is even more important. You have to have diversity in the teams. 50% women, 50% men. Today, we have 43%. And my goal is to make that 50-50. That's super important. Also, diversity when it comes to backgrounds and cultures, you're, you're developing for a global world. If I had only a Swedish team, it would be hunky-dory Swedish. That doesn't work. We have to have people from different cultures because they understand the different places we're going to. That's super, super important. And hustle. I mean, who doesn't want to be like this guy? Rick Ross, one of the coolest hip hoppers in the world. I know we don't look as cool as this guy, but inside you should feel like Rick Ross. You should feel as cool as this guy is. So go ahead and feel like the hustler Rick Ross is. But let's not think about the negative word of the hustle. Let's think in an entrepreneurship, hustle has a positive meaning. That means get your things done in a nice way. I mean, get things done in time, have momentum, as Klaus said, have this ongoing thing on deliver on time. And endurance is super important. I mean, you won't succeed the first six months, not, probably not the first year, hopefully within two years. Never, ever give up. This is a long struggle to get to the top. When you get there, you get this aha moment when you see the rest of the world in the horizon. So never, ever give up. That's super important. So that was the, the, uh, the policy about great team. Then about verify your idea. So I think it's super important before you start build anything, figure out what you're going to do. I mean, spend time on tweaking the idea, asking people. I mean, it's fine to share your idea with people you trust. They won't steal it. That's fine. So try out your idea before you even start building it. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. So let's go into the details. First of all, choose your market. You know, there are bad markets. There are good markets. There are where you don't make so much money, where you can make a lot of money. So when you, even before you start thinking about an idea, choose a great market first so, and go there. So why you know, going for markets where you don't make any money? So huge markets are interesting. And specifically, go for markets that can scale globally. Why would you build for something that's only local? That doesn't make sense. Start thinking globally. 100 years ago, people took a big ship, sailed for four weeks to sell stuff, Today, you press a button on the App Store, you have it globally. It's so much easier, so think globally from start. When it comes to the digital world, I always go in and check the top grossing apps on Play Store or App Store. I mean, there are some genres that always stand out. These are games, dating apps, and so more. 
and try to figure out which, which are the huge markets we can make money digitally. Uh, you can follow startup trends. There are always new things that are coming up that, that could potentially lead to a lot of money. Uh, and also look where VCs are investing. You know, before VCs were you know, investing a lot in social, maybe you know, we should do social stuff because it's easier to get money to grow, uh, and so on. Disrupt. So when your idea should disrupt something, and seriously, you can, everything can be disrupted. It, it is a fact. Don't ever think that something is done already. There's a king that king can never be overthrown. Kings or queens can always be overthrown. You can always disrupt things. Uh, Google Glass is an you know, example. I would say like apps such as WhatsApp have disrupted Facebook. Facebook is all about communication. It's not so much about social. It's how you communicate with people. Then you get apps coming out such as WhatsApp or Kik, etc., that disrupt Facebook. And that's why you know, Facebook are buying these applications for billions of dollars. Uh, user test and prototype, I said, talk about your idea with others. Do very cheap mock-ups and try it out quickly so you get input on what really makes sense in your application. And verify if the features you're building are core. And with core, I mean there are some features that really are important to users. The rest don't matter. And the, for example, if you take YouTube as an example, you know, watching the video is core. Up, thumbs up, thumbs down is core. Uh, feedbacking or commenting is core. And then uh, having it embedded is core. And that's it. Then, then there are a bunch of other features that are not core. And they don't really, really matter. So find the core and make the application fun. I come from a gaming industry where you have to make things really, really fun. But why not make a B2B application more fun? I mean, if you're building something, if people are enjoying it, that's a good thing, right? Instead of making it boring. So make it fun. Uh, and first attempt will not be perfect. So you have to improve continuously. Uh, I would iterate and improve the idea and until you prove the core and you prove the fun. And do it cheaply. And I said earlier, think globally. This is a global world. It's a large market. You make, can make much more money if you think globally. And instead of solving a local problem, it takes the same amount of time to solve a global problem. So start with the global first. And then execution. That's the third principle. Uh, you have to be fast. The world is much faster today. So you have to be as fast as the others, or you won't succeed. You are basically competing with people in China, Mongolia, Colombia, and all the other people around the world. So you have to be faster than them. So what's important in execution fast? I would say tight deadlines is super important. Uh, and the reason for that is, is human psychology, basically. If you give your team less time and less resources, you will notice that they will focus on the most important things. That's a human nature. They will focus on the core features and not doing everything around that's nice to have. So try to use tight deadlines and tight resources in order for people to, to actually focus on what's really, really important. But be realistic. I mean, don't you know, give them idiotic ideas on, on deadlines. I mean, that's not nice. Be realistic so you have a healthy team. It's important to have a healthy team. And always celebrate when you're nailing a deadline. Seriously, party. It's, it's really fun. I hope you all party tonight as well. I heard stuff is happening. Yes, woo! Thank you. <laughs> That's a fun crowd. <laughs> uh, and so an MVP, minimum viable product. A lot of people talk about MVP, but they don't really get it. Minimum is really important. You know, you have to have many resources, many costs, and many time in order to deliver an MVP. And if you bring that down to zero, that's even better. Seriously, you have to try to get an MVP out without anything. That's a real MVP. And that's, you quickly get feedback back from that as well. And deliver on time. This is actually one of the things I think is most important. It's a psychological thing as well. If you start slipping, if you start missing deliveries, you lose. Every time, make sure to miss a delivery, whatever it takes. Build that into the culture of your team that you never miss a delivery. Uh, you could work more. You could cut down, cut down on the scope. Uh, you could add more resources. That's fine, but never miss the deadline. Because it's a good feeling to deliver on time, you continuously have that momentum of 
performing. It's a psychological thing. If you stop performing, the team will sooner or later fail. And uh, the final principle, quality matters. If you don't think Chuck Norris approves your idea or the stuff you're doing, you should just you know, get out of it. You probably get a you know, drop kick out of Chuck Norris, and you don't want that. So Chuck Norris should approve your idea and your product. You should feel very OK about that. And what does that mean? So basically, deliver and polish the core product. Focus on what's really core, and you have to define core. That's up to you to find out what is core. And that's when you, ver when you verify your idea, you figure out what is the core, really. And that's the key to your success. And everything around it is the nice to have, but I call it fluff, because fluff is a much more negative word, because the, it is very negative. It is not nice to have them at all. If you start building stuff that doesn't matter, it's going to take time, and it's going to waste your time. So ignore the fluff completely and polish the core. And polish, I mean, make it just a better experience. Build the core and then polish the hell out of it. And the end-to-end -end experience matters. If you have a funnel where the user comes into the app or your application or your service, whatever, they're gonna, it, that's going to decay with time that you know, you're going to have less users when, during the, the funnel. So try to optimize that to so increase the users in the end of the funnel. And basically, when you come into the application, the first impression should be really nice. And they should always feel like, and the secondary step is that they should always feel like there's more to come back to, so they even consider coming back. So if they consider coming back, they probably will forget about coming back because there are 20 or 30 different other services that takes their attention. So you need to have hooks. And here's the growth hacker that comes in here. Have the hooks to get them back. If a social or viral loops or, or just you know, notifications. But don't make them spammy. That's irritating. And always improve. If you still have a good product and people like it, continuously improve it. But improve the core and improve the end-to-end -end experience. Be extremely metrics-driven. Uh, and with metrics, I mean things that drive your business, that makes money. Uh, and if you're building features that don't drive your metrics, you're basically wasting your time. So be extremely metrics-driven. And A-B test a lot. So these were our principles. Hopefully, they were of some uh, joy to you. So we use them across some of our products. I'm going to just talk uh, about them quickly. And please download them after us and try them out. So the big uh, application here, I think, in Lithuania is TV3 Play. Have you used it? There's uh, a few. Yeah, thanks. They're paid. No. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so this is uh, our, our application. We completely rewrote both front end and back end and all the mobile applications uh, in four or five months. Uh, and launched it without any problems, basically. So, and the, the number of users, I think, increased with 20% the past two months. So it's been, uh, our metrics have been going up. Uh, then we have a sports app that's live in, in Sweden and Denmark, basically where we give uh, free sport highlights to people. Uh, and this has actually grown with 500% the past weeks. It was high numbers even back in four weeks, but it's grown incredibly fast due to some clever things we've done. Um, we had Olympics in Sweden, so we created the Olympics app, who was second place under Flappy Birds. Then the guy took Flappy Birds down, very good timing, so we come first place. That was really good. Thank you. And then some copycat created Splashy Fish, who made it to the first place, but that went down again. So we were first for approximately two, three weeks. So very happy about that. We turned this into our sports app now, which is doing really, really well. Esports, we're probably the, the broadcaster in Western Europe, not disregarding Eastern, Euro Eastern China and, or I mean, Korea and the countries, disregard them, in the Western uh, world, who's focusing the most, I mean, incredibly more than the others, on esports. We think that's the future. We are really strong on sports. For example, you have Viaset Sports, I guess, here. We're really strong on sports, but we understand esports is, is the next big thing. We built up large you know, production facility, which is I mean, as big as this room or more, uh, creating our own content. And then we're doing a lot in, in going out and, and the licensing stuff as well. So this is a big thing for us. Uh, we do a lot of second screen things, experiences, interactive experiences around TV, which we think is important. Uh, it's close to our, our DNA to do broadcasting, but we want to be interactive around it. Uh, we launched this as well, and now we're bringing this into our TV experiences. 
Uh, Clipster is our uh, coupon app, doing really well. It's grown with 500% since a year back and uh, making a lot of money for the partners we work with. And this is our, our new music app, uh, which we launched in Sweden and Norway. Uh, and it's basically uh, uh, a great radio app uh, and has uh, grown with, I think, 40% the past two, three months uh, in amount of users. I think you can download it here as well. So just do Rix FM and, or Power, you get it. So that was the policy we launched in four or five months. Uh, hopefully, I mean, you learned something from the policies we used. Some might be applicable, some might not be interesting at all. Take whatever you want. Uh, and uh, with that said, if there are any questions, let me know. And once again, thank you to the login people for a great work. This is, I mean, I've been on a lot of conferences. It's been extremely professional. And you're putting, you know, Lithuania and Vilnius and your great people on the map. So great work. Thank you very much to you guys.